if ocean acidification has as big an impact on the ocean as, as, it, as it might, then we could be facing the loss of, of all coral reefs in 50 years. We could be facing the loss of most of our major fisheries. We could be facing the loss of, of a lot of the kinds of marine biology that makes our planet livable. If we didn't know what we were doing, we could claim that, that yes, we destroyed these ocean systems out of ignorance. But we know what we're doing. We know that when we emit carbon dioxide to the atmosphere that we're killing off coral reefs. And this gives us moral responsibility to change our behavior. It's simply unacceptable for us to go on knowingly destroying systems that have taken millions of years to develop and will take millions of years at best to recover. We're ruining the water in our planet, which is 70% water. We know we're doing it, we know its consequences, and we just can't seem to stop. And so, you know, how do I feel? Is maybe frustrated and powerless and feeling like, uh, what can I do to stop this from happening? And so I come here and speak to you today to, to try to do what I can to prevent this from happening and I do my best, but I, I, I feel frustrated and powerless, frankly. If other people understood what, what was going to happen, I think they'd change a lot more quickly than they appar apparently are changing right now. We are in a position now of making a choice to strive for a healthy ocean and a healthy planet. That's what we have to do. Future generations may not have that choice. The fundamental question now is whether the carbon experiment can come to an end fast enough to avoid the worst consequences. I believe that it can. That is, I believe that we can reduce emissions fast enough to avoid the doubling of carbon pollution in the atmosphere. That's the basis for many of the dire predictions about what might happen. Fossil fuel use has, I think, sort of crept up on us. Um, we, we started using it instead of whale oil uh, to, light, to light our houses. Uh, we used a, a convenient byproduct of, the, of kerosene, which was gasoline, to, to fuel the first internal combustion engines. And all of that became more and more convenient and more and more part of the way we just usually did things. And we never ever thought of the consequences. We never thought of what we were leaving behind, the trash heap of CO2 that we were putting in the atmosphere. And we didn't have to think about it before because it wasn't such a big problem before. But now as our society has grown, as our, as our energy use has grown, as, as cars and planes and trains and all of the kinds of machines that we use around us that, that burn fossil fuels in some, in some way, as those have become just a, a normal part of so many daily lives, then we've created a global problem. We've, we've packed our atmosphere with CO2, and that is creating a huge set of ecological cascading problems. The only solution to ocean acidification is to reduce CO2 emissions. We cannot engineer our way out of this. The ocean volume is too large. In the same way that every little bit of CO2 that we emit adds to the damage and risk of damage in the oceans, every bit, little bit of CO2 that we avoid emitting helps a little bit too. And so while it's true we need to transform our entire economy, we each individually need to make sure that we, can, we do our part to prevent additional carbon dioxide from being released into the environment. Do I have hope I can change everybody on the planet? Sorry, probably I don't have a lot of hope about that. But I, 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 I have hope that collectively people understand what's right and wrong and th that we will do the best job we can to fix this. What's at stake here is this vast ecosystem which is a life support system for the planet. So when we're changing the fundamental conditions we're actually changing the ability of life on earth to exist. That's what's at stake.